Welcome to the 13th floor. I'm Marty Duda. Today we have Jamie McDowell with us. Hello, Jamie. Hello. How's it going? Good. Great. Good, good, good. Uh, you've got an album coming out very shortly, mm -hmm. Extraordinary Girl. Yes, that's right. Uh, yep. You've you got to watch it, you know, the tall poppy thing. You're, you're setting know. yourself up for... That was my first thought. Um, it took me a while actually to pick an album name. That's a, a song on the record right. that I ended up going with. It's sort of the most meaningful to me as per usual, people choosing title tracks like that. Yep. But um, <laughs> I did, that was my um, my first thing. I emailed my management and said, I want to call the album Extraordinary Girl. And the first thing they wrote back was, oh, um, are you sure? Like people might think you're calling yourself an extraordinary girl. Right. And I kind of thought, so? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> What's wrong with that? <laughs> exactly, very good. So um, it's coming out in May. Yep. Uh, it's actually your third album. Yes, yeah. But it's the first is kind of a different musical direction, it's right? A slightly different path, yeah. I mean, I like to think, um, well, a lot of the songs that I was writing at a younger age sort of had all the fundamentals of country music and then when I went to the studio they were often produced in more of a pop style right just from well for a while they were kind of referring to you as New Zealand's Taylor, Taylor Swift. Swift yeah that's just what you need right <laughs> totally <laughs> yes I mean I don't know I could have been um could have been the truth could have been lazy journalism you don't know well, but it's better um, than being called New Zealand's Kid Rock or something I like agree that, right? I was you know and I'm really yeah proud of the comparison to be honest <laughs> yeah yeah um but yeah, so I mean, I think that just kind of came from being probably like 17 when I first went into a studio and kind of not really knowing exactly what I wanted to come out sounding like and right. just trialing things. And now I feel like I'm at a place where I know exactly what I want to sound like. And, and that then, place is Nashville. Yeah. <laughs> so you went to Nashville and yeah, recorded well, it, the album? It actually wasn't um, really like a, a plan or a conscious decision I had in mind. I went to Nashville just because a lot of people had said, you know, you'd love it there, you should go and check it out. And I kind of went there, it's more of a holiday. Right. Um, and I came across a producer called Nash Chambers, who's actually an Australian, but yes. he was over there at the time. Yeah. Um, and his sort of philosophy on music making was very much in line with what I wanted to do. He was so much about not interfering with my writing process and a very relaxed Aussie book. Uh -huh. We were originally gonna record at his studio in Australia but he ended up moving to Nashville in that sort of time frame. So we said, why don't we just do it here? It makes sense. It's the kind of vibe we can get some cool musicians together. So that's sort of how that came about. And one of them is Casey Chambers, right? Yeah. yeah. So Casey is, I mean, obviously Nash's sister, mm -hmm. um, a country legend in Australia. She is indeed. Yeah. And someone I've been listening to and uh, covering for a while as well. So I. I kind of, um, I never wanted to ask Nash whether she would want to feature on a song, but um, after kind of hearing Tori, we both felt like it might be a really cool vocal part for her to do and reached out and she's just the most down to earth, lovely person. So she agreed. So I feel cool. very, very honored. Very good. And we're going to hear you sing Tori for us now, yeah. right? So what, what can you tell me about the song? Where, where um, it's just a story, a true story, about a pa past relationship of my partners, actually. <laughs> and um, it was probably the first sort of set of songs I, I wrote when I was in Nashville. Um, in about 15 minutes, it was probably something I'd wanted to tell people for a while, and it kind of just blurted out, and there actually isn't that much more to it. Okay, well, let's give it a listen. Yeah. 
you put all of your clothes in his drawers happy to ignore the daisy shampoo that i had left so many years before oh toy can't you see i'm sorry i never All right, we're back here at the 13th floor with Jamie McDell. We heard Tori. And you know, you told me bef just before you came here, the, act the album is still kind of in the process of being it made. Is, yeah. And <laughs> you just had a special guest to lay down some vocals. I did. Tell us all about it. Wow, I, um, I had Tammy Nielsen pop into the studio and do a vocal on one of the tracks, right. um, which was just so amazing. She's just the most incredible vocalist. And more than that, the, the greatest human being you could probably even meet. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty high praise. <laughs> um, and honestly, yeah, so she's, she's done a great vocal. Um, and it was a song I wrote called No Woman's Land, and it's sort of a feminist track. And right. um, the moment I wrote it, I just, I really wanted there to be a strong female vocal on it. And I, I suppose, I mean, I couldn't really think of anyone more perfect than Tammy. So um, it's, a, it's great that she agreed to do it. Also, she's um, obviously, an ind independent artist and right. works on a lot of things herself, whether it's managing or touring. And I suppose that's a sort of realm I'm entering into now. Um, so she's been very inspiring in that sense for me as someone to kind of get advice from. Right, because you've made a transition from going from being on a major label to kind of doing everything yourself. Yep. <laughs> How is that working for you? To be honest, I'm loving it. Yeah. Um, I mean, I had such a great experience with labels, don't get me wrong, but I think now uh, just being able to kind of make decisions and have them follow through exactly when I want them to has been really great. Um, and I think I learnt a lot being at the label. I kind of saw how the mechanics of the industry work and I sort of got to a point where I figured that I could probably actually do a lot of it myself um, with, with a solid team in place. But yeah, I've, I've been loving it. Ah. And do you think there's going to be a difference in audiences between whoever was listening to your first two albums and who's going to listen to this album? Yeah, possibly. I think um, the way I kind of describe it is if, if you've sort of been a follower of me for a while and been watching you know, my YouTube channel and thing like, things like that, I think um, moving into more of a country Americana realm won't be very surprising. Mm -hmm. Just in that um, I've often discussed my influences like John Denver and Jimmy Buffett and things like that and um, and have kind of incorporated those things into shows and in some of the album tracks I've done previously. Yeah, I heard um, you do an amazing version of Leaving on a Jet Plane, the oh, John Denver song you. the other night. It was <laughs> thank excellent. You. Yeah, it was great. <laughs> but I'm hoping that um, yeah those kind of that loyal fan base will probably follow through and then possibly it'll just be the kind of music that might be more appealing to their parents 
um, whereas before maybe it wasn't so much. Mm. Okay, all right, so the next song we're gonna hear, A Liar Loves a Liar. Sounds <laughs> intriguing, what's that one all about? Um, it's basically just about sort of uh, people that have attributes of being slightly unfaithful and rebellious and how they can kind of um, attract. Mm. <laughs> okay, very good, let's give it a listen and we'll come back and talk some more. My, oh my, I think I crossed the line My dirty shoes aren't welcome at the door My, oh my, I think I lost my mind Now I can tell the ceiling from the floor What's wrong is still wrong What's right ain't my problem Now you're gone It's all so wrong Did I push you away? Did I say too many things I shouldn't say? Explaining to my friends why you'll come back My, oh my, it's far too late to run I put my body through too much for that What's right is it real? What's wrong is Okay, we're back here one more time with Jamie McDell. We just heard A Liar Loves a Liar. We got one more song to hear. But uh, you were telling me that you're also involved in another musical adventure with your yes. sister. Yeah. So what's happening there? Fingers and mini pies. Uh -huh. the moment. Um, we just, my sister and I just released a record um, under the name Junes. And it's sort of a much more synthetic, um, produced beats, experimental project. A lot of it driven a little bit by, more by her influence, mm -hmm. obviously. Um, but it was just something for us actually to do to kind of reignite our sisterly relationship. Right. 
And did it work? Yeah, we're <laughs> friends again. <laughs> no, we had quite separate ch uh, childhoods just right. through. Because one of how you was kind of raised by Tess your mother, and one by your yeah, father, and one and, in Auckland, and my parents and one up aren't even separated. It just so happened That's that crazy. it was like that. <laughs> and um, I, I kind of had started university in Auckland, so I was spending a lot more time here, and she was living in Northland with my mum. Um, so we just kind of stopped talking. Mm -hmm. um, and after a while, I figured that that wasn't a really great relationship to have with your family member. So the only thing we do have in common is music. Um, and so we just started writing some songs together and, and actually found that she had kind of, because of the many various schools she'd actually gone to, had had these really interesting influences and styles of songwriting that I hadn't really opened myself up to. So right. um, it, w it was a cool experience for sure. Very good. And uh, now you talked about your um, love of Jimmy Buffett and yeah. John Denver and James Taylor and all that. So we're going to hear you do a Jimmy Buffett tune. Uh, it's one called He Went to Paris, which is um, a, a lot of people think of Jimmy Buffett as being almost novelty songs and lighthearted. Totally. And, you know, Cheeseburger in Paradise. Cheeseburger in Paradise, Margaritaville. <laughs> this is a more serious song, isn't it? Yeah. And I think um, those sorts of tracks are, of his are ones that are my favorite. Um, right. I think just so happens that I, I suppose my parents cherry picked those when I was a kid and used to play them to me. and. That was sort of more how I, I see Jimmy Buffett. Yeah, it's interesting because back in my day, uh, we would always rebel against our parents' music, but that doesn't seem to be the case anymore. It's Not everybody's at all. influenced by them, and yeah. maybe because your parents have cooler records than mine did. Possibly, <laughs> I think I also like I really looked up to both of my parents and um, wanted to be just like them. Right. So I think that sort of had a bit of a a draw uh -huh. towards that type of music. Okay. Now, the, the album's coming out May 4th. Yep. And you're going on tour as well? Yes, yeah. So we've got, I think, five dates in New Zealand, possibly getting over to Australia, mm -hmm. um, and more dates to be added. So that'll be with full band. Ah, cool. And obviously we'll be playing a bit of the old stuff, a bit of the new stuff, and it should be a good time. And in between now and then, you've got to finish making the record. Yes, I've got lots to do. Yeah, time is money. <laughs> All right, well, we'll let you get to it. Uh, and we'll hear you uh, do one more song. He went to Paris, a little Jimmy Buffett. Thanks for stopping by. Thank you. He went to Paris looking for answers to questions that bothered him so. He was impressive, young and aggressive, saving the world on his own. Warm summer breezes and French wines and cheeses put his ambition at bay. And summers and winters scattered like splinters and four or five years slipped away. He went to England, played the piano, and married an actress named Kim. They had a fine life. She was a good wife and bore him a young son named Jim. And all of the answers and all of the questions he locked in his attic one day. Cause he liked the quiet, clean country living And twenty more years slipped away Well the war took his baby, bombs killed his lady And left him with only one eye His body was battered, his whole world was shattered And all he could do was just cry while the tears were falling, he was recalling answers he'd never found. So he hopped on a freighter, skidded the ocean, left England without a sound. Now he lives in the island. Fishes the pilings and drinks his green label each day. Writing his memoirs, losing his hearing, but he 
don't care what most people say Through 86 years of perpetual motion If he likes you, he'll smile and he'll say Jimmy, some of it's magic Some of it's tragic But I had a good life all the way He went to Paris looking for answers to questions that bothered him so.